Hello. Welcome back uh, to another pen talk. Today uh, we're going to be looking at a pen that I purchased at the uh, Philadelphia Pen Show about two weeks ago. And uh, I'm very impressed with the pen and uh, I think the pen has a very interesting story. So the brand is uh, Signum. It's an Italian manufacturer. They've been around for a couple of years. Um, this pen was on a table that Steve Zucker was uh, presenting that had a number of these pens on the table in various forms, also some uh, roller bowls and others. And uh, the price was excellent. This pen cost me $90 total. So um, let's take a look at the pen. Let's open it up. This is an old new stock, as they would refer to it as. As you can see, the box has some wear on it. Some of it's for me opening it up. It comes with uh, your typical warranty, guarantee, made in Italy. And I think as we go through the pen, I'll point out what I think are, are classical Italian uh, features in, in some of the higher-end Italian pens. As some of you may know, I love Deltas. so. Uh, just a classic box. Uh, I assume it's some kind of vinyl, but it almost feels like leather. And this pen, according to uh, Richard Binder, was first made in 2003. Uh, standard inside with your uh, faux suede here, a uh, nice little silver emblem. And as you can see, Cigna has their symbol trademark, kind of like Delta has it with the uh, pen nib. In, in reverse and, and, and so that's kind of what's there so as you look at the pen to me I was into understated pens at the Philadelphia Pen Show and this one struck my eye immediately I love the the gray acrylic that's here with the patterns in it it kind of looks like stone trying to bring it out in, in the sunlight and the side of the box says gray all the metal trim, the clip, is uh, sterling silver, which is, again, typical of Italian pen manufacturers. And there on the top of the cap, like in, in other pens, is their logo. Kind of like a chariot wheel. It's been referred to uh, by uh, Gourmet Pens in her review of, of another one of these pens. What also I thought was interesting is when I looked at the bottom of the barrel, I saw this emblem, DDP. And what's in the middle of it is is 925, which is the indication for sterling silver. So DDP is the divine proportions. Mathematician in Italy came up with this a long time ago, 1700s, during the time of da Vinci. And this pen apparently incorporates those proportions. And Signum is known for that. And, and also some of the other um, manufacturers like Visconti, I think, has also used this term in some of their pens. This is a long pen. It's about six inches from end to end. The weight's 30 grams, so it, it's in the medium size. I mean, it, it has some substan substan substantiability to it, which is nice. I think it's a good weight. Feels great. I mean, very well polished. Again, similar to what I've experienced with Deltas and love in Deltas. It's an unscrew cap. The 30 grams is evenly divided between the cap and the barrel, so they're 15 grams each. Uh, the nib is an 18 karat nib, which is also an amazing thing to get in a $90 pen. Uh, I got it in broad because I took it to Mark and got it ground into an architect grind, which I really enjoy, and we'll see that in the writing example. Again, the uh, trademark symbol of the chariot wheel, and it's nice that it's oriented around the breather hole. Some scroll work. I've heard these uh, pens are made by Bach in Germany. Uh, classic, what appears to be an ebonite feed. Uh, the flow uh, of ink flow is great. The section's a little on the small side. It's about 9 to 10 millimeters. Um, I don't mind the step upper here. It is noticeable, but uh, I generally hold my pens in the section. It's a decent size nib, probably a number 6 nib. Uh, as you can see, it fits well into the hand. Uh, maybe that's part of the divine proportions. When you put the cap on, um, it obviously adds weight to it. And as I said, half the weight is in the cap, but it's still not unbalanced and it could be written with posted if uh, that's your preferred method. 
I'm impressed with the Ionic design. I mean, this is the Ionic model. They made three models. So I'll show you a picture of the different three, which are all distinguished by the clip and also the materials that are used in the pen. Um, I haven't cleaned this up totally. As you can see, there's a little tarnish. And I did a light polish on it just to bring out the highlights. But I didn't have to do much to put this pen into really excellent condition. So, I mean, I think it's just interesting that here's a pen which probably hardly anybody's ever heard of, I find, in a pen show. I'm going to try to keep relationships with uh, Steve Zucker. He is a local person. He lives in New York City. Before we do some writing, I thought we'd take some more close-up looks at the uh, pen. So one of the things that's subtly done is, as you at the bottom of the cap is engraved Italy. And then below the clip is uh, Signum. Very subtle, very interesting. Something I just picked up uh, looking at the pen recently. And hopefully, again, you can get this nice close-up view of this wonderful acrylic. We also want to take a little close-up view of, of how this nib was ground. I'll show you some pictures of what Mark... Uh, does with an architect's grind. I'm trying to use this uh, paper in the background to keep the focus on the nib. It looks like you ground the top a little bit. As we come around you can see that angle that he put on the the nib tip so uh, as you go up towards the end of the nib you get a finer line and also how he's grounded to give the horizontal lines you know more thickness than the vertical lines. You know, part of the nice things about an interesting grind is it gives you some uh, ways of doing line variation by just the angle and direction that you write with and not necessarily pressure. So as we look at this pen in the writing sample, The Signum Ionic DDP for divine proportions. This is an 18 karat nib, rhodium plated, obviously to give it the silver look, and it's been ground. It's a ground broad, and it's uh, an arc. And uh, apologize for the uh, misspelling. It's an architect's grind by Mark, and I'll show you what, what he means by that. The nib is very smooth. It was very smooth when it first came out of the box uh, before it was reground. It's an interesting ink I picked up at the show. It's a platinum ink. Baroon sepia, it's a pigmented ink, so it gives me a sepia ink and it's pigmented, two types of ink that I don't have much of. Uh, Anderson Pens was selling a, a great variety of inks at the show in Philadelphia, so this is one that I picked up. Uh, it's an interesting color. It's a little bit lighter, more intense brown than I expected from a sepia, but I enjoy many types of inks and I enjoy playing with them and you know, just seeing how they work on paper and work with different pens. So this is a, an ink I'm certainly uh, enjoying uh, for its variety. So I, I hope you enjoyed this nice little review of an uh, interesting Italian pen manufacturer that maybe someday if, you're, if this is a type of pen that appeals to you, you might find an opportunity to acquire one. Occasionally they show up on eBay. Occasionally other sellers have them. Uh, so thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this enjoyable, educational, and uh, may you always have great pen experiences. May you have many of them. Till later.